Hi everyone! This video will demonstrate how to properly care for your water and evacuation lines in your dental treatment rooms. At the beginning of the day, we need to run all of our water lines for a total of two minutes each. This will help flush out the stagnant water and any buildup of microorganisms that may have settled in the lines overnight. So any item where water flows through it, such as your air water syringes, high-speed handpiece hoses, and your ultrasonic scaler hoses, we need to run each of those for two minutes. Before we can get the equipment to run, we have to get our equipment turned on. Turn on your unit master switch, and then turn on your rheostat. For our rheostats, in order to turn the water on, we need to flip the toggle switch over to point towards that blue dot. With the master unit switch and the rheostat on, I can now run my water lines. We can run our lines with clean bare hands. Press the water buttons on both air water syringes at the same time for time efficiency. Direct the water into the sink. If you're too far away from the sink, direct the spray into your HVE hose. Do that for a total of two minutes. Next, we can run our high-speed handpiece hoses. To get the high-speed hose to run, we need to step on the rheostat. Direct the hose towards the sink and then step on your rheostat. Do this for a total of two minutes. Once all of your water lines are run in each treatment room, we can then set up for our first patients. Between patients, we need to run our water lines again. This will help flush out any microorganisms that may have been retracted back into the water lines during treatment. This is performed after the treatment room has been wiped down and disinfected, just before you set up for the next patient. So we can do this with clean bare hands because everything has been cleaned and disinfected. Run all of your water lines again. This time they're only run for a total of 20 seconds. So the air water syringes, 20 seconds each. High speed hose, 20 seconds each. And if you have an ultrasonic scaler, that would be done for 20 seconds. One additional step that's done between patients is to freshen up the evacuation lines. We need to suction a cup of water through the HVE and a cup of water through the saliva ejector. Turn your HVE on and dip it in and out of the water. This will help to create some turbulence and shake off any buildup of debris inside the hose. Do the same thing for your saliva ejector. Dip the hose in and out of the cup of water to help create turbulence and shake up any debris from those inside lines. At the end of the day, when we're done with all patient procedures, we can then do our end of day procedures. To take care of the evacuation lines, we're going to suction a half gallon of evacuation line cleaner in each room. Dunk the hose into the cleaner, lift them in and out to create that turbulence to help shake that debris loose. Dunk your saliva ejector between five and 10 times. Keep the hose running. We want the inside of the hose to dry out. Keeping the suction on will help draw air in, creating a dry environment. Remember, microorganisms need water to live and reproduce. So if we can dry out the lines, it's harder for the microorganisms to survive. With the HVE, it'll suction the solution much more quickly. And that's why we do the saliva ejector first. So with the remaining solution, we'll use the HVE to suction the rest of it up. Dunk the HVE tip in and out of the solution 
again, creating that turbulence to shake the debris loose from the inside of the evacuation lines. Keep the suction on for a few minutes to help dry out the line. After we've taken care of the evacuation line, we can then take care of the water lines if we're using self-contained water systems. So a lot of dental office use self-contained water systems where we can control the water in the system. So using a system like this, a blue tab maintenance system, we can drop a tablet into the self-contained water bottle and that will help inhibit the growth of microorganisms. For this particular brand, we dissolve one tablet in a liter of water. Once the tablet is dissolved, the water can be used for up to 28 days. Now these maintenance tablets are very different from shock tablets. If you use a shock tablet to treat the lines, we have to flush that shock chemical out of the system before we can use it on a patient. So always be sure to follow your manufacturer's written instructions. At the very end of the day, we need to turn off the master switches that are on the wall. This will turn off your air compressor, your central vacuum, and your water. Make sure you don't touch these with your dirty gloves. Take your gloves off or use an elbow to turn the switches off. Now with those switches off, we can check our evacuation traps. Under the silicone tip of the saliva ejector, we have a trap. Take the tip off and look at the trap. If you can see the holes in the trap, it is still good. If those holes are clogged, we would need to remove the trap and replace it with a new one. For the HVE, the HVE trap is under this larger lid. We can remove the lid, take out the trap, and if there's a lot of debris in it, we can dispose of the trap and replace it with a new one. Make sure you follow your local ordinances when it comes to waste disposal. A lot of areas require special disposal if you have amalgam in your traps. Once you've cared for your traps properly, you can then disinfect your treatment room. One last trap that needs to be checked is the trap that's on your central vacuum. The trap is in this piece that looks like a mason jar. To check it, you would unscrew this jar, pour out the liquid that's inside, and then clean the trap. Now they do make disposable traps for this one. The entire jar is disposable along with the trap filter that's inside. That's the easiest way to take care of this particular item. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.